um, uh, Elizabeth, if yes. uh, if you would uh, grab the microphone and provide Thank your, uh, you can pull it over if you want, so you okay. don't have to turn. Um, <laughs> Thank you so you much. Provide uh, your name, whom you represent. Yes, I'm Liz Tice. I'm the founder of Stop the Magnet. It's a Houston-based pressure group focused on illegal immigration. Um, and I do support the bill. I think any deterrent we can get, obviously, we're desperate for a sanctuary city enforcement bill. But uh, tonight I wanted to uh, raise your attention to something going on in the upper reaches of City Hall. We have sanctuary city, how it may perform on the ground. But I do think the, the committee should be aware of what goes on inside of City Hall. I recently uh, did a TPIA on the uh, International Communities Office of International Communities. TPIA. Uh, Public Open Records Act, oh, okay. so that I could read email correspondence occurring in the Office of uh, International Communities. And um, my impressions of those emails I wanted to share with you, um, I think you should know. Um, the Office of uh, International Communi Communities is about a $200,000 a year annual hub for communication between different organizations, mainly nonprofits. Um, there's also a lot of lawyers, universities um, that have legal clinics, um, Im immigration advocacy. There's nothing in these emails that present two sides to the story. So already taxpayers in Houston are basically supporting all of this advocacy and Catholic charities and groups like that that provide refugee services. Um, there were emails that uh, did things like look searching for people that spoke the Mayan tongue Kiche when we got the surge in. Uh, there were emails about what to do if there was counseling for a deported family member. There were a wide variety of issues coming forward, but I think you should um, take note that a lot of these um, refugee resettlement, I've got the list and original email. Some of them may be linked, I hate to say it, would be worthy of a raised eyebrow in that they may be terrorists coming from terrorist-sponsoring countries. And um, certainly I think that if those are to roam loose and to take in refugees, um, the state may really want to do some vetting on that. Um, Catholic Charities, uh, they use millions of dollars to support. They form the platform for these surges that we're seeing with no end in sight. I'm not seeing anything that assures us that, hey, it's going to stop. You know, I'm sorry it was inconvenient last year, but we got it under control and we're going to stop it. Where does it end? And we have these groups that are operating on federal grant monies. And we're just standing here, and they're they're providing all these services, but none of it is focused on citizens. It's it's just astounding. Um, anyway, they're they're not focused on that. There's also a big push in the city for providing legal aid to all of those that got through the surge. And uh, we even had Harris County uh, looking around the city for pro bono attorneys. We had the chief justice of the Texas Supreme Court. He made a promo video to look for pro bono attorneys. Where are any of these services going for American citizens? It seems that everyone is focused. You look around, you do a 360, and you see all of these services going to non-citizens, and we are required to pay for it whether we like it or not. So I would urge you to take a look at doing something about these refugee resettlement, nonprofits, all of these groups that are getting fed at taxpayer expense, and really maybe putting some oversight on them. That is a, that's the other layer of the sanctuary city. Members, questions for Ms. Tice? Senator, uh, yeah. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Tice, I know you, it sounds like you uh, observe a lot that goes on in social media and emails and took a look at the history and timing of things. Did you see a pattern of the, the nonprofits and what they were doing in the buildup for, for supporting people? Did, did that precede the 
the folks coming across in, in larger quantities, or did it happen as a result of it? Well, I think Catholic charities and the like, the Catholic Migration Service, they've been operating for many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, they a lot of Cubans and so forth, and they've actually done some okay work. But what's happening now is the dependency level of a group like uh, Catholic, the Catholic Migration Services. The it's called the Bishop Migration Service. They are on a federal dependency level, and for every one private dollar, they're accepting $1,000 in grant money. I mean, that's out of control. Um, that's not charity. That's that's being a contractor. Um, but as far as the timing, uh, it, it, it we see an increase in their activity, and we see the plan, the larger plan from the city of Houston to coordinate all these groups in what they call the collaborative, and it's all here. And it lines up with the recent radio interview that came on the Mark Levin show February 26 by a woman named Sue Payne, who was privy to a phone conversation with a uh, leader of La Raza, Cecilia Munoz, as well as two or three White House officials that laid out the plan to create a country within a country and to overwhelm us with illegal aliens, creating these basically um, Distant, they, they would be seen as seed links. They would be provided. They wanted them to be welcomed. They wanted them to receive Social Security cards as soon as possible. And the idea was that they would overtake the host citizens. It's an overtake plan. And when I look over this plan coming out of the city of Houston, I see that it lines up with my summary of what this lady said on the radio interview. It's an agenda. That's my conclusion. And I do think that all of these charities are involved. That that agenda item that's in my notes came out in June. It's called the Collaborative, and they did not want to let me see that document. So I had to go back and forth with the Attorney General. So I have it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Tice. Uh, if, if there are materials you wish the committee to have, um, I'd be more than pleased to have you uh, leave them with the clerk if you have so additional copies. I have, unfortunately, I have this one. I like to. Uh, uh, Senator Lucy, I like to. I don't need these anymore. I like to have anything that that, that she might have in her that that shows there's a, a thousand to one match. match. Uh, I've never heard of anything like that. Yeah, and Ms. Tice, do you have anything to, uh, in regards to the one to one hundred, the, the one to thousand? The migration service. I'd be happy to get that to you, Senator Lucio. I will email. I'd like to have that. Would you? And what it's for? Uh, use for? If you would, if you'd provide it to the clerk, so all the members could uh, could have it. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, 